time, I've got to fight the better fighters out there. What's going on? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, I'm not going to sit on the fence with this one. I'm going with Usyk. Now, both Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk have not fought the caliber of fighter that each other's facing. So, for example, let's go take a little quick look at Anthony Joshua's resume. Beautiful resume. Anthony Joshua, 24 and 1 with 22 KOs. Last fight, Kubret Pulev, IVF mandatory. Two fights with uh, Andy Ruiz, the first fight. Um, I picked Andy Ruiz to win. I wasn't on the fence with that one. I didn't really feel... Um, Listen, he, he didn't take him seriously. The next fight, you see, he came back 10 pounds lighter, Anthony Joshua, and um, did a lot of good movement. He learned a lot between that first loss and coming back for the Andy Ruiz fight in uh, Australia. Before that, Alexander Povekin. Povekin was laying some hands upon him, rocked him a couple of times, but nonetheless, Povekin got his ass knocked out. A lot of people didn't really find the Joseph Parker fight entertaining. But me, I loved that fight. It was a chess match. We got to see Anthony Joshua box. Carlos Takam, that was a replacement for uh, what was also supposed to be Pulev. The biggest win of his career at that time. Legendary, Karen, Karen, uh, legendary fight. Very, very, very good fight. Like, I really enjoyed that fight. His um, win over Vladimir Klitschko. I feel Klitschko let him off the hook. Eric Molina got starched. Dominic Brazil got starched. Charles Martin, I'm hoping that we see Charles Martin back, hopefully on a Canelo undercard against Chris Ariola. That's my personal, that's what I want. Dylan White. And then before this was his come up fights. And all these names I even know too. Very, very, very good resume. You can say the best heavyweight resume in boxing, and then you got Dylan White, number two. Who else? Um, Deontay Wilder, number three. I'm just going off the top of my head. Alexander Usyk, 18 and over 13 KOs. Both of these guys, by the way, are Olympic gold medalists. His heavyweight run hasn't been, you know, very spectacular. He's only had two fights, Chaz Witherspoon. The Derek Chisora was a very, very close fight, but understand what we'll talk about a little bit later. His cruiserweight run, he put a boot in Tony Bellew's ass. Former undisputed champion, one of the World Boxing Super Series ring magazine. All these fights, by the way, are available on YouTube or on the internet. I remember before his um, American debut, and when he had fought, um, I believe it was Glowoski, where I went and binged all of these fights right here. And as you can see, they were pretty much all stoppages, and they were easy to, to get through. And they're all available online. Dude is good, but I understand everyone's concern. It's my concern too. What happens when he gets hit by a six foot six, 240 plus pound Anthony Joshua? If he's going to weigh in that much, some have been saying that uh, AJ looks a little smaller. I haven't really noticed too much. People are saying that, you know, he's, he's cut some weight because let's be honest. When you look at all those names that I mentioned, and we're going to get into the undercard in a minute, who Brett Pulev doesn't move like a Alexander Usyk, not as skilled. And Ruiz got that power, that hand speed, but I'm going to go ahead and say that Alexander Usyk is more skilled, especially when you look at physically. Alexander Povetkin, very, very skilled, but he's a pressure fighter, not a mover, not a guy with where you're going to say, Alex, you're, going to, you're not going to say Alexander Povetkin, Sasha is going to outbox him. You're not going to say that. Joseph Parker, he tried to outbox him. He tried, didn't work in his favor. So that's the closest right there. You can say Carlos Takam, Vladimir Klitschko, similar style in between power, pun power puncher, boxer type of fighter. And uh, Vladimir Klitschko, not necessarily a power, I mean, not necessarily a pressure fighter. Eric Molina, Dominic Brazil, and we don't have to go any more further down the list outside of Dylan White. So in my opinion, Usyk, he's got to do a lot of moving, right? 
You know, he do not want to do all that duck and low shit trying to evade against Anthony Joshua, or he's going to get his hand uppercut it off. Now, let's go look at Usyk. Of course, you know, Derek Chisora is a pressure fighting power puncher. Chaz Witherspoon, well, listen, let's not, no need talking about that. Even when we go and look at, you know, the guys at Cruiserweight, He's Anthony Joshua was a better style than Tony Bellew, Marat Gassiev, Miris Breedis. I can see the fight going similar, you know, somewhat. No, I'm trying to remember. Marco Hook, Michael Hunter. Here's the thing what type of fight is Anthony Joshua going to fight? Let's say Usyk decides to play keep away, you know, want to want to get the points in. Not stay in the pocket, move around, in and out. Sometimes he likes to chill on the ropes a little bit too long. He does not want to do that. But what type of fight is, oh, God. Okay, all right. Boxing scene with the ads. Oh, what kind of, it's not funny. Um, what kind of fight is Anthony Joshua's going to fight? He's going to have to pick up the tempo. You know, we can't expect for Alexander Usyk just to stand right there in front of him. So is he going to try to play the pressure fighter? You know, that's something that we really haven't seen against a highly skilled fighter from Anthony Joshua. You know, try to cut off the ring. Or is he going to get pot shot? I don't know. You know, I can say, you know, because I've covered all of these guys' fights and I watch them all do video, I can say I can look at it as a 50-50 fight. It's not hard to say or to see that Anthony Joshua has the power edge and that Usyk has, you know, the little man edge, the movement, the evasiveness. I'm interested to see what Anthony Joshua's going to weigh in at. Remember, um, for the Louis, for the, the biggest he's been was 254. That was against Carlos Takam. I was always saying to myself, like, why is he putting on so much weight, especially when he came in at 230, when he first started his career? The Andy Ruiz fight, 247. Then the 10-pound loss for Andrew Ruiz, 240 for uh, Kubret Pula. I think he want to be around that 240 mark. That is going to be a small ring. I'm interested in see what the ring size is going to be as well. By the way, we are going to be here throughout fight week. The fight week schedule is going to come out tomorrow. So I'm expecting that they're going to have two press conferences, a press conference for the undercard, which we're going to talk about later on in the video. Ugh. You know, and um, the main event. Maybe they may have them all in one. I doubt. Also, we're going to be streaming this stuff. The press conference, the media workout, the weigh-in, you know, and post-fight content. And we have the UFC 266. So we're streaming that press conference, that weigh-in, that post-fight press conference. is a very, very, very busy week. So that's why I'm getting this over with. Also, do me a solid. Down below in the description box, I put some links down there for you for some apps you can download. Well, actually, a app you can download is the WBC app. Some big things coming. I'm not going to um, put it out there yet. Okay, well, I'm going to be trying to get interviews with WBC fighters. Who? Who? But anyway, download the app. It's down below in the description box. It's the WBC app powered by the Vive Network. All my videos and videos of other boxing content creators are going to be on that app as well as boxing events, you know, boxing events from Mexico and whatever the ones the WBC decides to, decides to sponsor. Some may be pay-per-views, $14.99 a month. Don't shoot the messenger. Just do a brother the favor and download the app, all right? Help a brother out. I don't ask you for your super chat, okay? I'm, I'm gonna give you the little, the little spiel. I don't ask you for your super chats, okay? I don't go, send me the cash app, send me the, send me the shooter shoot, shooters, get a, uh, send me the cash app. Send me the Venmo. I don't, I don't, you, my shit not looking all like an infomercial. You know, all this shit all on the screen, but you could do me a favor and you can download the app, right? All right, here we go. So moving on. I like the fight. I'm going with Usyk. And I'm going to go ahead and say, as I say with a lot of fights, I am not confident picking Usyk because what happens if he gets hit? You know, here's how I feel. Is it a crime? that I want to see Usyk get punched in the face. Because then I'm going to be like, yo, if he take a shot from Joshua, then that means he can hang in the division. I want to see him get punched. I want to see him possibly get dropped and get up. I want to see how he eats. I want to see how he eats it. 
you know, then I'm going to be like, all right, I can start matching him up because right now, you know, that's the only, that's one of the only factors that I'm seeing that people are having an issue with picking Usyk is what happens if he gets hit. But I have no issues in saying that I feel Usyk can outbox Anthony Joshua. I have no issues. So we're going to see what type of fight, you know, Anthony Joshua fights. And of course, you know, all this week and expecting his interviews to be on some fucking Riddler mother goose shit. You know, he never really gets no disrespect. Hey, listen, you know, I'm sorry for all the cussing, but sometimes Anthony Joshua interviews. It's like, bro, what is you saying? Like you saying a whole bunch of nothing. Like all these fucking like riddles and shit like that. Joshua knocking him out in eight. That's your opinion, brother. You're entitled to your opinion here in front of the people. That's, you know, that that's your right. God damn it, Big J. He don't never might just see that I'm streaming. He just he always call when I'm streaming. He's killing me, bro. But yeah, um, I just don't, you know, I can't see Anthony Joshua out boxing Alexander Usyk. Unless Usyk is on some some scared type deal where he's scared to engage. You know, and we have to factor in. I've met Usyk in person in Philly. You know, what I do is when I meet fighters, I like to size them up. I'm about six foot three, 270 pounds himself. So when I see fighters, I like to say, all right, how big, you know, he's listed at what? Six three. That's about right. He's about, he's a legit six three. And I've um, met Joshua before. So what's the reach? He has a 78 inch reach. 82 inch reach. My issue is he just got to be careful pulling back and not ducking too low and stay off the ropes. His chances greatly increase. If Joshua was to win, I see him winning by KO, not on the cards. That's how I see it going. And you got to think with the amateur background of Alexander Usyk, bro, he's probably just like, you know, when people were talking Lomachenko versus Gary Russell, I was like, Lomachenko probably didn't see like 100 Gary Russells. So don't tell him how many Anthony Joshua's he didn't. I, I don't know. You know, I'm, it would have to be a knockout. I expect for him to be on the bike. I expect for him to have a nice bike. I mean, isn't that, you know, that's a question I was going to ask too um, um, about the rematch clause. We're going to talk about that later on in the video. Like, isn't that what you would want the game plan for him to be for Usyk is to stay on the bike in and out, stay off the ropes. You know, don't try to, don't try to engage, you know, get your little shit off and then get out. Or get your ass uppercut it to fucking Pluto. Don't get it twisted. Joshua has a very, very high ring IQ. And likely even more higher after um, his defeat to Andy Ruiz. This is not disrespect. The, I mean, I'm just going to say Wilder. And I got to talk about him tomorrow. You know, Joshua gets a lot of disrespect among, I'm going to say, YouTube hardcore black boxing fans. It's like, bro, dude is good. Them motherfuckers be like, you know, giving him a hard time. One of my, the biggest issue I had with him is how much muscle he was putting on. Usyk is not getting a decision in the UK. You know, you know, that, that, that's something to talk about as well. Also, what's the, um, what's this arena hold? Is this 70,000 or is it 60,000? It's going to be here on the zone here in the States. In fact, let me pull up the zone right now and give you the schedule to everything. Since we're um, live in real time, I'll tell you when everything is. And we're going to talk about the uh, undercard and what's next for the winner. Because I want to know if there is a rematch clause. Here, let's go over here and look at this, see what's on the schedule. I'm logged into my zone account. So far, I don't have nothing listed. The press conference is 8 a.m., I stream all these UK press conferences, so it's going to be early. 8 a.m. on Thursday. That's Eastern Standard Time. That's the press conference. The weigh-in is also at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to be streaming it here on the channel. Please take your time, like the video, subscribe. And right now, the media workout is not listed. It's probably on the, um, on the uh, YouTube page. By the way, the zone is scheduled. They got to get it together over there. Ugh. So, yeah, you know, I would expect that there would be a rematch clause. And right now, let me pull up the rankings here. 
I don't think that Anthony Joshua, he doesn't have a WBA mandatory because Trevor Bryan and Daniel Dubois have to fight. He doesn't have an IBF mandatory because they keep bullshitting around. You know, Charles Martin was supposed to fight Hergovitz and Hergovitz, whatever. I don't know. Joe Joyce is the only next mandatory. And he hasn't even been ordered to be mandatory yet. So basically, Joshua's next fight is pretty much free. You know, whenever he returns in, you know, March or April or so, he can fight whoever he wants. Because he doesn't have to fight Joe Joyce until around this time next year. So I would believe that there would be a rematch clause, right? You know, especially for a fight like that, it's a rematch clause. Like you, it's a rematch clause. I think we can safely say. P. Fury saying Usyk's got to go to the inside gives AJ a very slight advantage. Well, also, how does AJ fight on the inside? I'm talking about inside, inside. You know, smothering his, smothering his space. We never really seen nobody challenge him like that before. AJ's opponents have been pretty much right there in, you know, middle of the ring type of guys, except for when he had to play keep away himself against uh, Andy Ruiz in a second fight. And I think that was a beautiful performance. You know, he didn't want to get his ass knocked out. Andy Ruiz is dangerous on the inside. So to break it down for you, if you don't know, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury are fighting again October the 9th. $79.99 on PBC, on Fox, and ESP and pay-per-view. Me, personally, I don't think that pay-per-view is going to do, you know, expectations. I'm guessing around 300, 400, maybe 400, 500,000 pay-per-view buys. Um, that undercard, I'm feeling that undercard with uh, Robert Herlinis versus Adam Konoski, too. You got uh, Frank Sanchez versus F.A. Ajagba. And then you got Big Baby Anderson versus Tereshkin. Oh, I forgot his name, but... I'm digging that undercard. The winner is expected if it's Tyson Fury to fight Anthony Joshua. But what if it's Deontay Wilder? What happens there? Do we have a Fury versus Wilder 4? You know, I don't think that would happen. I don't know. You know, what happens there? If if that was the case, if Wilder wins, and it's a whole other video, but I say they should just gun right for, you know, the winner of Joshua Usyk. But the heavyweight division, as you can see, a lot of these guys are eliminating, eliminating themselves. And the Dylan White situation, that's just a whole, you know, that's just a whole crazy situation right there. But he's fighting. And Lord knows I don't forgot who he's fighting. Oh, man. Who is there to start fighting again? I don't forgot. Oh, Otto Waleen. I like that fight. I like that fight. But don't be surprised if Tyson Fury ended up being the WBC franchise champion. I'm not too thrilled talking about that. Ew. So once again, I'm going with Alexander Usyk down below in the description box. I put some uh, links to the WBC app. It doesn't take too long just to click the link, download it to your phone, help a brother out, or you can send me some super chat. Which one? Download a free app or send me some super chat. You can send me some super chat too. So let's go look at this undercard. And when you have a fight of this caliber, I'm going to smoke a little bit of pot. Hold on a minute. When you have a fight of this caliber, right, where both fighters, Anthony Joshua and Usyk, you know, set to make a lot of money, you can expect for the undercard, just like I expect for Canelo versus Caleb Plant. By the way, we will be here live for that tomorrow, September the 21st at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for that first official press conference. It's going to be broadcast November the 6th on Showtime Pay-Per-View. But the press conference is tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern. Uh, so, yeah. When you have, a, when you have a, a two fighters like this who take up, you know, a huge chunk of money, you can expect for the undercard to be a little bit underwhelmed. You got a Lawrence O'Callaghan returning. The sauce. 16 and over 13 KOs. WBO Cruiserweight Champion. Taking on a Dylan Pozovic, 15 and 0 with 12 KOs. I mean, at least he's undefeated. I guess I need to go watch some tape on this dude, huh? This is the co feature. Not co feature. It's not a feature. The Chief Support. Let's call it that. Chief Support. I like that better. So 
this is the co-feature. You got the return of Colum Smith, 27 and one with 19 KOs. His first fight back after Canelo beat his arms up. Taking on the Lennon Castillo. This should be a good fight, but still I'm not, you know, uh, you know, 21, three and one with 16 KOs. Some nice solid fights here on his resume. Marcus Brown, Dimitri Bevo. And then it's just, you know, Campbell Hatton versus a Sonny Martinez. Campbell Hatton just don't got the goods to me, man. He just don't got it. Campbell Hatton don't got the goods to me. 3-0 and with no KOs. I mean, yeah, he looked like his pop, you know, but he just don't got it. First four opponents, you can't really blame them, you know, 0 and 10, 0 and 4, 4, 4 and 1, and a 2 and 4. He just don't got it. I wouldn't be surprised if he loses to this dude. I think it's coming. I think before he hits like 15 and 0, he's going to take a loss to somebody because, dude, just listen, I'm not trying to be hard on the kid. He just don't got it. Yeah, Okali's fight is the co-main event, and that's the that's the card. You know, that's the that's that that's it, fellas. That's what we're getting. Christopher Usley, if that's how you pronounce his name. Versus Kastan. I don't know these people. I don't I don't know these people. Am I supposed to know? I guess I am, right? I don't know who this man is. And you know, I mean, when you, when you got, you know, Joshua Nusik and Joshua making all the money he's making, you know, the undercard's going to be, you know, not that good. <laughs> not that good. I don't think that picking Usyk is a bad pick. It's just that, you know, if he gets knocked out, he gets knocked out. And right now, I just don't want any more bullshitting around with the heavyweight division. This is the vision that we could have had an undisputed champion, you know, at least two years ago. You know, like, they got to stop BSing around. The winner of Anthony Joshua versus Usyk should fight the winner of Fury versus Wilder 3. Just get that out of the way. All that rematch clause to try to get the belts. Ain't nobody trying to hear that no more. AJ has gotten better since Parker, and he's gotten a lot, and, and I feel that he's gotten better since mentally, you know, physically, you know, and in the ring since uh, losing to Anthony, I mean, since losing to Andy Ruiz. And we don't know what Andy Ruiz is doing next. I'm guessing him and Loser T should fight. But knowing PVC, they'll probably try to put that shit on pay per view. The heavyweight division is deep, but. For one, these guys don't want to fight each other because they're so used to making so much money and the market's not the same anymore. You know, the market's not the same anymore. I mean, listen, it was a fun fight. It was a great fight. But it was no reason why Andy Ruiz versus Chris Ariola, who in his last fight was talking about retiring, should have been on pay-per-view. That was on pay-per-view mostly to accommodate for Andy Ruiz's purse, make the people pay for it. So regarding Andy Ruiz, his next fight is probably going to be on pay-per-view again. I would think that the rematch clause is just for AJ. Usually rematch clauses only go for the champion, not the not the contender. And, you know, Uzander Usyk was originally supposed to fight Joe Joyce for the WBO interim because uh, Fury versus Joshua was going ahead. It seemed like it was going ahead. Eddie Hearn was running his mouth, arbitration. Fury was going to get sued for him, his next generations and generations of money from uh, Team Wilder, about $80 million or so. I got to start talking about that soon. I got to be honest, I'm not really thrilled about gearing up for Fury versus Wilder 3 coverage because it's going to be a race war. We all, come on, we all know how it get down. It's going to be a race war. You know, the black fighter this and the, the boar meat and, you know, by the way, tickets are doing really good for this fight. I just don't think the pay-per-view buzz is going to be there, despite what ESPN and Fox throw at it, because rest assured, in the next couple of weeks, 
Wilder and Fury is going to be everywhere. And it's going to be interesting to see how Wilder reacts to all of his media engagements, engagements because he's going to have to go on first take. He's going to have to go on Shannon and, 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 and Skip. He's going to have to go on all of that stuff. You know, that's so it's going to be really interesting when they start grilling him about the 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 glove and all that shit because they're going to get in good. This is a this is a joint ESPN and Fox broadcast. If you don't remember, they went hard during fight week in the week before. Wilder and Fury was on everything. You know, so... Wilder may have been able to escape, you know, when they first had that press conference, but he's got, you know, to sell the fight, especially for how much money both of them are making. Joshua has the belts to be the A-side, and yes, he just generate more money, Wilder Fury on ESP, and it's on ESP and pay-per-view. It's going to be $80, October the 9th. It's not that far away. I don't even know. Alexa, how many days into October the 9th? October 9th is in 19 days. That shit Would is you close. Do you know what day of the week October the 9th is? No. Get out of here. That shit is close. It's close. So, I'm going to be here. I'm hype. I don't, oh, also, um, how does the travel stuff work? Can UK, can UK people travel to the fight? I don't know. I, I've been trying to really, really stay away from the news. Like, for example, can the UK people fans travel over here to the States without a two-week quarantine? You think the fight's going to do bigger numbers this time? I don't know where you're getting that from, bro. Nobody's talking about it. There's no buzz. It took too long to happen. It took too long to happen. I'm not confident. And also, I got to be honest, I'm not confident that Fury wins this time. I don't know. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm seeing, you know, what Malik Scott's doing. I'm thinking if Malik Scott is able to pull this off, can you imagine? How dare you? How dare you? Dream Chaser underscore CJ has just donated $9. Wilder's still the best heavyweight in your eyes. In your eyes, bro. Thank you for the super chat. Remember, we're all entitled to our opinions, man. We're all entitled to our opinions. The U.S. lifted restrictions. I thought it was lifted in November from what I've read. I don't know. I'm going to take your word for it. I'm going to take your word for it. Ain't nobody asking for this trash trilogy. Damn. I mean, it's not that yet. People are not asking for it. Like, I don't feel it. Like, like the second fight had, like, some buzz behind it. Yo, the heavyweight dude fighting again that knocked the most, knocked the Irish dude out. That shit ain't, it ain't floating around. And then we got all these pay-per-views coming up. The good thing is, it's the first one of all these pay-per-views coming up. You know, with all the UFC. It's a log jam in, in, in October, November. Also, you hear what they're trying to do with Lopez Cambosos? Trying to move it again to the 16th? Bro, Triller is some... Listen, Triller's got to get their shit together. It's like, imagine trying to buy some pre-sale tickets and you cop them tickets and then they move the fucking event again. Like, they got to get it together. But yeah, I don't know, dog. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of getting itchy about picking Wilder to win. But then I got shitty predictions. So if I pick Wilder, then I mean fucking Fury going to win. So I don't know. I got to be careful. I, gotta, I can't jinx him. So I think I'm going to just ride the fence on that one. Shut up. Pause. You know what I'm saying? I'm scared. I don't know what's up with Triller, man. That shit is annoying. Like, that shit eh, is annoying, man. It's annoying. Like, they have no... You can't You can't trust them. You don't know what the main event is going to be. You don't know what city is going to be. And you don't know what the price is going to be. They'll tell you it'll be $20. Then they say, nah, 50 They say it'll be in Los Angeles. They say, nah, we're moving to Florida. They say you're going to have De La Hoya. They say, nah, you're getting Holyfield. Like, bro. Motherfuckers is out of control. Like, how we can't we can't trust you. I can't trust you. But listen, I'm getting up out of here. We're gonna be here tomorrow for the Canelo versus Plant press conference live and in real time. And also, we're gonna talk about Fury versus Wilder three tomorrow in the whole video. Ugh. I'm T Street Controversy with Fight View 360. Hey, take your time out, like the video, subscribe. Also, the link to the WBC channel app is right down below in the description box. Do the brother solid, download it.